Gracias por continuar con nosotros en Foro Global. Es momento de hacer un enlace Skype con Rodrigo Saidán. Él es el colaborador de America's Quarterly, además de profesor de negocios y finanzas en la Universidad de Nueva York con sede en Shanghai, China. Así como en la Fundación Dom Cabral en Brasil y profesor visitante de la Copenhagen Business School en Dinamarca. Es autor de numerosos artículos de opinión y libros publicados por el MIT. También es doctor en Economía por la Universidad Federal de Río de Janeiro en Brasil. Y es la primera vez que nos acompaña. Rodrigo, welcome to Foro Global, to the America's Quarterly Space. How are you? I'm, I'm fine. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure and an honor. On the contrary. Uh, I read your piece uh, in, in which you uh, mentioned that there, is, there are a lot of ingredients taking place in Brazil, in the Brazilian presidential election, one of which is kind of very, uh, it, it, it's a preoccupation for the, for the region and it's the fact that there's a possibility that there might be a, a coup d'etat, a military coup d'etat in a country that experienced the military dictatorships until 1985. Yes, um, unfortunately, we have um, a candidate that is um, anti-liberal, uh, somebody that is using the system uh, to foster uh, an agenda that is um, completely contrary to the democratic process, uh, somebody who has been vocal on his support uh, of peasant dictatorships. Uh, he said that he would, like, um, knock, it, knock his uh, son if he were to be gay, Somebody who on the Tribune said that somebody, uh, another congressperson uh, was not free enough to be raped. So we have somebody who is uh, absolutely uh, against the democratic values uh, that any um, society should hold um, in the 21st century. And that man is Jair Bolsonaro, who has also as a running mate a, uh, a general, a retired general. Exactly. Um, uh, Mr. Bolsonaro has been a congress a congressman for 26 years, if I'm not mistaken. Never did anything other than uh, scream against uh, everything else. He has absolutely no agenda, no plan. Uh, he's, um, like, uh, again, a supporter of dictatorship and somebody who is undermining Brazilians, uh, the Brazil's um, uh, democratic institutions from inside. Uh, some countries, like some developed countries, can um, can Uh, its institutions can try to overcome this, uh, but in emerging countries, uh, this kind of candidate is very dangerous for uh, democracy. Do you think that, uh, of course, uh, the election hasn't taken place, but he's still leading the polls? We saw uh, during the last uh, weekend the uh, demonstrations, big demonstrations against uh, Bolsonaro. Do you think that uh, the polls could change in what, uh, what uh, still has uh, a few weeks before the election? Um, actually, the election is, is coming soon. Um, the demonstrations were amazing. Uh, a really show of support that it started uh, with uh, women bending together against mm -hmm. a, a clearly miso misogynistic and sexist uh, candidate who has made many remarks against women and um, against uh, gender equality. Uh, he's, uh, unfortunately, if anything, the polls is, are showing that uh, there is no Uh, a scenario in which he might win in the first round of elections. Uh, but yes, there is, still, there is still a little bit of time for the other candidates to try to coalesce and get together and stop uh, this uh, anti-democratic candidate. Uh, thing, uh, thinking that Brazil suffered the, the military dictatorships and that many of the people of the, of the elite, uh, the class that are now supporting Bolsonaro, still uh, recall that uh, military dictatorship. Uh, what do you think is the main uh, reason why Bolsonaro has gained so much support? Is it discontent with the political class? Is it corruption? It's the economy? Uh, it's those three, those three um, dimensions that you just cited. Uh, you have Brazil is just coming out of its deepest economic crisis in like maybe forever, mm -hmm. in which the economy shrunk by more than 10%. Uh, the corruption scandal of the Workers' Party, uh, for which uh, the former Brazilian uh, president, uh, Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, is in jail. Uh, the Workers' Party mismanaged the economy, it was a horrible, horrible party in terms of, um, uh, of managing the economy well. Uh, they left the, uh, Dilma Rousseff. Uh, was impeached, uh, rightfully so. Uh, when she left, the, uh, the economy uh, in shambles. Mm -hmm. uh, but this discontent cannot, should not generate uh, this kind of candidate that is ab absolutely against democracy. What I think is happening is really like risk reward. Uh, people are saying uh, situation is so bad that we are open to any kind of uh, uh, 
of maverick rogue candidates that can try to promise um, to restore the credibility of the, of the economy, even if the, the risk of uh, a coup or something really bad is also high. People get desperate in desperate times. Well, we'll be following the last days of the campaign and, of course, the presidential election, the first uh, round. Thank you so much, uh, Rodrigo, for being with us tonight. It's an uh, absolute pleasure. Thank you. It's an honor. And good luck to uh, Brazil and Latin America. Thank you. Muchas gracias por habernos acompañado esta noche en Foro Global. Soy Genaro Lozano. Te invito para que continúes con la programación de Foro TV. Y por lo pronto, muy buenas noches.